Okay, so uh, first of all, I've already told you what's the same about these guns. Now I'll tell you what's, what's a little bit different. Uh, these bottom two being more modern sporting weapons, they're more geared toward the hunter that doesn't want to mess around with loose black powder or the little percussion caps. So basically what they've done is they've taken the loose black powder. Actually, this is uh, Hodgdon 777, which is a black powder substitute, but double F or 2F or double FG or whatever they call it, black powder would work just fine in any of these. Uh, that's the loose stuff. So the loose stuff will work in all of them, but convenience in the market drove these companies to come up with these pellets. You don't really want to touch them with your hands because you get moisture. But if you can see that, that is a 50 caliber, 50 grain pellet of Hodgdon triple seven, the same as the loose powder that is in my can over there. So what you would do is you would drop two of these pellets and each one equaling 50 grains of powder that would give you a 100 grain charge in either of these bottom two. I don't like to run 100 grains in this top one, and it doesn't work well with the pellets, to be honest with you. It works better with loose powder, because it's old. So you'd use two of those pellets, that would give you a 100 grain charge, and then you would put either, in my case, this is what I like, these are called power belts. You don't need the Sabo, it's just got the little silicone ring around the back of it and a little aerodynamic tip, okay? And this actually fits right around your powder. So your powder actually goes right up inside, makes it a nice self-contained thing when you ram this down into the bore. Now this is actually a true 50 caliber slug. A lot of your uh, Sabos, the slug is not 50 caliber. It's only 50 caliber when you measure it with the Sabo, okay? So these are actually a bigger bullet. I think they hit a little bit harder, and they shoot very straight. I, I really like power belts. There's a lot of other options out there. I've got a few of those here I can show you. But in my case, this is, this is what I use. Now, this one over here is what's called a Sabo. So you have basically a bullet... It's, uh, it's got to be close to 45 caliber. It's the same as what you'd load in a handgun for the most part. So it's got the cantaloupe on it and everything. So that, before you put it in, it would go in this Sabo, like so, okay? So you'd have your powder in there, and then you'd ram this Sabo all the way down. And again, you can see the little ring on the back of it that goes on over your powder pellets. So what happens is when it gets shot, just like a shotgun, it will eventually, when it leaves the barrel, it'll leave that plastic behind and you'll have just the, uh, just the actual bullet flying on to the target. This will be somewhere in between. It usually ends up on the ground about 50 feet in front of you, like a shotgun wadding, if you will. Same idea. Now, also, I don't have any here because I don't use them, but you could really, you could shoot any of these guns with a 50 caliber round ball and a piece of rag or paper for a wadding, just like they used to shoot the old Flintlocks and the old Hawkins. There's no reason you couldn't shoot 50 caliber round balls in any of these. These bullets are just more modern. You could actually get a uh, bullet that's the same as what you'd fire out of a 308 or a 30-06. So it's a 30 caliber projectile or 308 caliber, actually, if you want to get technical diameter. And the Sabo is just thicker to make up the 50 caliber difference. So when the Sabo leaves, basically you've got a 308 or a 30-06 round flying out there to get the deer. So that's another option you have. A lot of options with these things. They're kind of fun to mess with, you know, and they're, they're kind of a, they're a tinker toy. I'm not going to tell you they're not, but they're fun. Oh, are they fun? I never wanted anything to do with them when I was younger. All I cared about was my regular hunting rifle. And then one year I bought a muzzle loader just for the hell of it. And I've been playing with them ever since. And they are a hoot. Now, if you use loose powder, of course, 
you have to measure each round, so you have to have a powder measure. This particular one here is made by uh, Thompson Center, but a lot of other companies make them. This one is uh, adjustable. It goes from 50 grains, and then every click out adds another 10 grains to your powder charge. So if you went out five clicks, you'd be at 100 grains of powder, just like you would if you were dropping two pellets in. I use 90 grains of powder in this particular gun because it shoots better that way. That's kind of like the recommended load. So it's real handy to have this with loose powder. I can get exactly the load that I want and I can still shoot the modern bullet and still hit what I'm aiming at. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. If you like vintage stuff and you're clicky and weird like I am. And I guess that brings us to primers or uh, what provides the ignition to actually ignite the black powder or black powder substitute, whichever you're using. Uh, these two bottom ones are drilled and tapped for 209 primers, which are originally primers that were intended for use uh, as a shotgun primer. And that's that's exactly, I mean, I, I have some that say muzzle loaders, but if you see, this is actually a 209 shotgun primer. That's, that's what these are. So these are the same things you'd use if you were reloading shotgun ammo. And they're kind of a little self-contained thing they're easy to they're easy to handle because they're big and they look a little bit like a 22 shell you see the the back has the primer on it and then it's made out of copper and then that's that's where the charge comes out on the front i don't know if you can see that and they're one bonus to them is they're very easy to get hold of they're easy to handle so if you will let's see Trying to think of which one's easier to show you. These just drop in the back side, so when you when you break down, you can see that there's this this big hole, and that primer just goes right in that hole. And once you put the primer in the hole, and I'm doing it without even looking, see it's in there. You just close it, and now that gun is primed. Even though there's no powder charge in there, of course, I know that, but that's that's how you prime it. And legally. Most state don't, states don't recognize this as a loaded weapon until it's primed. So if you want to haul it down the road in your truck or your car and have the powder charge and the bullet in it, that's fine. It's not considered loaded until you put the primer in there. So that's the last thing you do. When you load one of these, you never want it primed when you load it. You always want to load it and put the primer in last for safety reasons. Okay? So those are the 209 primers, as you can see. I'll leave them out here so you can get a look at them. And then these older guns, you pull the hammer back, and if you can see, there's actually like a nipple that sticks out. Can you see it? All right. Now what those use are these old, just like in the old days, Percussion caps, they come in these little tins. This little tab here you pick up on. And this is a percussion cap. It's very small, very easy to drop, very easy to spill. And what happens with these is they slide right on over the nipple. I'm gonna do this and then show it to you afterwards like so, if you can see that, instead of going in a hole. Now, when this gun goes off, once it's charged, this will be shattered mostly by the blast or it'll be knocked off. It'll be gone, you'll never see it again. So you don't have to worry about what happens to them after the fact, unless you put one on there to show somebody and you can't get it off. But uh, at any rate, this is, I said that they usually shatter. There is an expended one right there that came out of it that can prove to you that they don't always shatter. Sometimes they stay right there. So there's the difference in the two. And you can see the uh, 209 primer actually is a lot bigger, easier to manage. And they, they also provide a lot more fire when you fire them. There's a lot more wallop to the primer. So that actually makes the firearm more dependable in the rain and you know in damp weather because 
more fire getting to the powder, more chance the powder is going to go off. Sometimes these percussion caps, they can be kind of iffy. With me, that's just part of the fun. You know, and uh, if somebody asked me which my favorite muzzleloader out of all of these was, even though these are inherently more reliable and they're better built, I can't help myself every time I'm going to pick this one. <laughs> but I'm weird like that. <laughs> Ask anybody. <laughs> so I guess that's about it for the shooting and the fun part of uh, muzzle loaders and our little history lesson. And uh, now I've got a lot of cleaning to do. So if you guys want to come back, I'll have a video on some of the cleaning products and the way you clean the modern inline muzzle loading black powder.